Hi, and welcome to this module on working with files. This is our 13th module in the fundamental series. So please feel free to check out the previous modules first if you haven't already. So, so far up to now, we've really just been dealing with in-memory tables, but it's important to know how to save data to disk. So you can, for example, uh, save your KDB data down to CSV format, and you can open that up in Excel. You can also save your KDB tables in a KDB format on disk. And this is really useful, obviously, because if your queue process dies, um, you've got a copy of your data saved, which means you can launch a new queue session and load that in so you don't lose your data. So we're going to be looking at creating file paths, first of all, so using a few important commands, key, hsim and sv. Then we're going to be looking at saving and loading KDB data. Then we'll also look at saving and loading data from text files, CSV and JSON format also. Cool, so let's get started. So before we look at loading in the data, it's important to know some useful inbuilt functions and they're gonna help us create file paths. So the format of a file path in Q um, looks like this. So it starts with a backtick and then it always has a colon out in front and then you have the name of the path here separated by a forward slash. So this bit here is the bit that's saying it's got a, it's a file path here. Now, if I just run this with a dot after it, this means it's the current directory. So what the directory I'm currently in, then if I have a path after that, it's obviously relative. And if I want to put the full path in, um, I can preface that with the drive here at the beginning. So we're going to use this with the key command, first of all. So key when used with a file path returns any files you have in that file path. So this is saying, give me all the files in my current directory. I've got this um, checkpoints file, then working with files exercise, which we you know we'll come to later. And then we've got the working with files notebook here, which is this main notebook. So it's even showing our hidden files here um, that begin with a dot. Okay, so I've got three files existing in this um, file directory. And key is really handy um, for us. It can return your files present in any location, um, your current location, or you can give it a relative location. So it's similar to running ls on Linux in that way. Um, to create it, you can simply write it. So simply just type out backtick colon and then the file path you want. So I've created a file path here um, with uh, the directory is data with my file is test.csv. Um, but that becomes a bit harder to do when I've got things like spaces in there. So I've got, I've got a space in here. I can't simply say that I get a parse error. So what I must do is first of all, make it a string. So putting the string quotes around it, and then I need to cast that back to a symbol. So your file path would always be a symbol with that back tick out in front indicating that. So you see here now I successfully have the file path created with that space in it. And you can also use key to check for the existence of a file or a folder. So if you just pass that file name or path, you'll get back whether it's there or not. So here I'm running key on this working with files. We know that's in there. So the path is returned. And if I pass it one that's not here, like this one, for example, you see, I get nothing returned. So we could do something like this to check if something exists or not. Um, and you see, we get a true returned when it's not there. And if I copy this and do the first example above the comparison, So you get a false return. So that's a handy little trick um, and another use of key. Okay, so have a go with this exercise using key and count the number of files in the current directory. When you're happy with that, we'll move on and look at our next important keyword, which is hsim. So hsim is really useful. You've seen above, we had to manually type out the back tick and the colon. What hsim will do is basically add that colon for us, which means we don't have to do it. So if we run key here, you see the colons aren't in there by default. Um, so we can always run our hsim in front of that and that will add the leading colon. So it saves us having to convert it to a string, add in the colon and cast it back to a symbol. Um, so it just combines multiple steps in one. And just to prove that that leading colon is important, 
if we show you here running key on a symbol here, um, all it's doing is applying key to a symbol, which doesn't do anything. Um, what we when we have the key ran on uh, with the leading colon. So if we stick this in and do h sim in front. Ooh. We won't get anything because that doesn't exist. But if we show what this is here, um, we could make this something more interesting. Like, um, what do we have above here? Yes, we've seen this up here. So just the same thing again, of course. And um, we obviously need to pass it the file path. Um, so if I didn't have this leaving colon, I get nothing. And as soon as I put the h sim here. I do get that back. So, you know, obviously you can just manually type that in, um, but here you obviously need to convert that to a string and then back to a symbol. So just saving you many steps there. Also, um, you don't need to worry about whether a symbol is already a file path when using HSIM. So say you use HSIM here and you already have the colon, nothing's gone wrong there. It hasn't undone it. You can add that as many times as you want um, in there which is useful here, just showing that again. Um, so it has no adverse effects. So you can basically run it if you're not sure whether it's in there or not, um, and you get your conversion to the file path returned. So that's how you can reference your disk st structure. Um, you just need that lead leading colon in there and HSIM is just a quicker way of doing that for you. Okay, let's take a break here and we'll come back in another video to talk about SV.